As we saw, gaseous law is a more general law than Coulomb's law. And so it's therefore more useful in solving for electric fields as a result of electric charges. So let's look at the following example in which we're going to apply gaseous law. Suppose we have a very long thin line of uniform and continuous electric charge. If the electric charge is positive, calculate the electric field near this line of charge. So here we have our very long thin line of charge that extends in both possible directions along the x-axis. Now we only show a small section of this very long thin line of electric charge. Now notice it's uniform and continuous and positive so that means the electric field lines will begin on this charge and will extend outward in all possible directions. So to find the electric fields at points near this very long thin line of uniform charge we essentially have to apply Gaussian's law. Now Gaussian's law states the following and to use Gaussian's law we have to chose a choose a certain closed region of space that encompasses a certain amount of this charge. So we choose a symmetrical region because symmetry allows us to simplify things. So we choose a symmetrical Gaussian surface to be a cylinder with a radius r and a length l. So this is our green chosen Gaussian surface region which is a cylinder with a radius r and a length given by l. Now by the symmetry of the region, the electric field on the surface of such region will be the same throughout. So now we're examining the electric field on the surface of such a region. But because this charge is uniform throughout, that basically means that the electric field at any point on the surface of such chosen region will have the same exact magnitude. Now, for the region of the chosen cylinder that lies parallel to the line, so on this side and on this side, the E is perpendicular to the surface and because DA is also perpendicular to the surface, they point in the same exact direction and the angle between them is zero and that will become important in just a moment when we apply this law. Now let's examine what happens at the two ends of our cylinder. Remember we're choosing an, a closed region of space and that means we have to consider these two sides as well. So at the two ends of our chosen cylindrical region the electric field is perpendicular to our DA. So on this side DA points this way, electric field points at this particular point downward and the angle is perpendicular and the same exact thing happens on this end. That means at these points the electric flux is zero because cosine of the angle 90 is zero. Now that means there is no electric flux through these two points, through these two side ends, so we don't have to consider them. So we're only looking at this entire region minus these two ends. So the net electric flux through our Gaussian region chosen by the green region is equal to the closed integral of the dot product EDA. Now by definition of dot product, this product is simply equal to the magnitude of E multiplied by the magnitude of dA multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta. Now angle theta is simply zero. Remember they point in the same exact direction and cosine zero is simply one. So this becomes one and we get this result. Now by the symmetry of this chosen Gaussian region we see that the E is constant in magnitude. So this is a constant. We bring it outside of our integral. We get the following result. Now we integrate and we get E multiplied by A. Now what exactly is the surface area of this particular cylinder? Well it's simply our circumference multiplied by our length. The circumference of this circle multiplied by the length will give us the surface area. So E multiplied by 2 pi r multiplied by L is equal to by the gaseous law that's equal to Q divided by epsilon naught. 
So let's rewrite this on this side. So we have the electric field, which is what we're looking for, multiplied by the surface area of this chosen region is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught, where Q is this enclosed charge, enclosed inside of our chosen region. Now, we solve for our E, and we see that the E is equal to, well, it's equal to the charge in this region divided by 2 pi L, the length multiplied by epsilon naught, multiplied by 1 divided by R, where R is the distance between the midpoint of our electric charge and that point where we're examining our electric field. So for this case, it's simply the radius of this chosen cylinder. So this gives us the electric field at points outside and near a very long line of uniform charge.